All right. Hello, everyone. I um, hope you're having a good day. i um, excited to do some art with you guys. I, um, I'm i not sure. I think I see some new names in the live stream today. So just to uh, give you a little background, um, my name is Caitlin. Um, I've been working with Art Snacks um, as the resident artist for the quarterly box. And every quarter, I teach three to four live streams. Um, I have a background um, in lots of different areas of art. I consider myself like a multidisciplinary artist. Um, I went to school for art education and computer graphics, and I took a bunch of different types of studio courses. Um, and then mainly after college, I have um, just explored different kinds of illustration um, in my personal work. Um, I was a longtime art snacker um, before I started working with them. Um, and yeah, that's kind of my background. And then um, uh, I'll, at the end of class, I think I'm going to go over um, kind of a review a little bit of what we've done this entire quarter and kind of give you a little flip through of my sketchbook, um, what I completed this quarter. Um, and then today, um, I thought we could just kind of have a doodle session um, where I'm just going to be pulling mostly from the supplies from the box this last quarter. And then I also have a couple others pulled in to just do some little details into the doodles. So if we want to go ahead and switch to the other camera, thank you. Um, so I'm going to be working in the sketchbook that came um, in the box. And if you didn't get this box, um, it's the Hanamule uh, watercolor sketchbook. Um, it's really great. It I I really like it. The um, if you're using like a light hand with your, uh, like when you're fanning out different water-based media, um, it dries so quickly because these pages are really thick. Um, I've really enjoyed working in it. So I'll be using this sketchbook um, and along with the other supplies from the, the box. So I have the Treckle size four round brush. I have my uh, Dr. PH Martin radiant concentrated watercolor. Um, the Faber-Castell watercolor pencils, the Faber-Castell gold Faber aqua dual marker. Um, these guys are great. It's a brush tip on one side. And then this tiny bullet nib uh, that's still pretty flexible. I almost consider it like a mini brush nib. I, I don't think it's advertised that way, but um, you definitely can get some variation in thickness with it, which is nice. Um, and then the uh, Derwent paint pen. I don't think I'll be using this guy a bunch today, but um, depending on which doodle I'm working on, I might do some detail work with it. And then outside of the box, if you're going to be working along with me and kind of want to do some doodles as well, I have a few suggestions of stuff you should have with you. And that is a water cup. And I have a very loved water clip cup here. I also have a paper towel and I have a little tray in case I want to put any of my uh, concentrated watercolor in there or if I want to mix any of my markers. Um, let me see what else. I have an eraser. I have a pencil to sketch with. Um, I have a white gel pen. And then I also have a set of black gel pens. Um, I just wanted to get any black pen to be able to do some detail work with this. Um, so these are the ones I grabbed, but um, you could grab a Micron or um, any kind of fine liner or any really any dark color uh, fine tip pen would do. So um, those are just the ones I grabbed, but I made sure to grab ones. Um, these are available in the art snack shop. So um, I wanted to make sure what I was using was available. And then I also have a pencil sharpener here in case I need to sharpen any of my colored pencils. And this is also a uh, Faber-Castell pencil sharpener. I believe we got this, this uh, like just two boxes ago, one box ago. Um, so that is what I'll be working with today. So I have a couple um, pages of doodles here. And so 
um, I was going to let uh, you guys contribute in chat to which doodle you want to see me work on first, and then we'll just see how much um, I can get into. Um, and feel free to ask questions during class. Uh, I'll kind of be glancing up at chat every now and then, but if I miss something, uh, Lee will probably catch it and read it out loud to me. So um, feel free to um, ask any questions if you're curious about this, because I already have things uh, sketched out in here and I'll just mostly be using my different things to uh, color in uh, the doodles. Uh, so let me know if you have any questions about the sketching process. But here I have one with fruit. Um, I have a space themed one. Of course, if you know me, I do lots of space stuff. Um, I have one that's all like these banners. And then I have another one that is all TVs. Um, so I'll give you a moment to um, put your suggestions into chat there if you have strong feelings towards one. Uh, I see Lee voted there with an apple emoji. Um, and yeah, I like I like uh, doing these kinds of, I don't know, I see a bunch of spreads like this on um, Instagram, specifically with people using them in like their planner journal or their bullet journal. Um, so maybe uh, if you if you do one of those or if you use if you're using this sketchbook as kind of like a um, bullet journal, you can then uh, take one of these and use it as your theme for the month. But um, and I was also like, I do this this spread a lot in my planner journal um, because I like to keep track of the TV shows that I watch um, in a year. And so I'll kind of color it. And then as the year goes on, I'll write in the name of the TV shows into it. Um, so it's just like little fun ideas if you're trying to like jazz up your notebook or something. Um, and these supplies that we got are really fun um, ones to use and something like that, especially something like this that has like a nice uh, brush nib on one side and then a good writing kind of size on the other one. So, all right, I see the apple, ribbon, sea gradients, fruit or space. Not super helpful, but I like the TVs. Okay, well, I will start with the fruit. And then we'll move on to the ribbon seat gradients and maybe we can like work on a couple of those and um, a couple of the TVs or something and bounce around a bit. But um, let's just start with the fruit since that seemed to get at least two votes. So um, we'll start with there. And I like this one too, because it, it like every time I was looking at the colors that came in this box, it just made me think of fruit. Um, so I, I even, if you watched my cutouts live stream, I talked about fruit a lot in that one <laughs> too. So it just must re really remind me of that. Um, so something I'm going to do before I get started with, um, anything with, uh, the water, um, uh, the water soluble, like it won't make, if I went straight in with this and wasn't planning on using water with it, I'd probably leave my pencil lines as is. Um, but this, uh, graphite is really soft and I don't want it to bleed as much. Um, so I'm going to take my eraser and just try to lighten up some of these lines um, at least a little bit. And if you have a kneaded eraser, that look works really well for something like this because uh, it's some kind of sticky um, and will you can just kind of like roll a kneaded eraser right over your lines to lighten it up, um, which is pretty convenient, but don't have that today. So I'm just going to lighten this up a little bit. I tried to get a wide range of fruits in there and colors. And I did pick some fruits like I don't have colors for. So we're going to have to do a little bit of mixing um, of, with our different uh, materials here. So um, if you're wanting to follow along, you can certainly uh, color the same, like uh, draw the same doodle that I have here, or um, you can take to Google or Pinterest. And when I'm like trying to find something like that, I like to look up like, I'll type in like uh, fruit icons or something just to try to like look up some references for like a really basic outline. And then you can usually find something to uh, 
get a jumping off point. I usually need some type of jumping off point when I'm drawing something. So it's nice to have some type of reference. Okay, so lighten those up a bit. Whew. Get those erasers out of there. All right, um, so I'm just gonna start, I don't know, I had my eye on this pair. So I'm just gonna start there. Um, and I'm going to start with the uh, Faber-Castell Gold Faber Aqua Dual Marker. Um, and I'm just going to, I don't really have like any, I don't, I don't know what I'm going for. I'm mostly just trying to like have fun with and make, keep, making everything feel really casual and not too realistic um keeping it very like childish um so i'm just going to do an outline on there and then i'm going to grab my brush and uh i don't have it super wet i just dipped it into the water kind of wiped it off a little bit um and then i'm going to go in and fan it out from the edges And I'm going to start with this for some of the fruit. And then uh, after it's dried for a bit, um, I'm going to go either back in with more marker or um, go in with some of the colored pencil. So that's what I plan on doing here. And depending on, I think every fruit, I'll kind of have a different approach um, with it. So. And this is like a fun way to, to experiment with your supplies um, and, he, you know, use a wide range of colors. And these markers fan out really well. So you can put, you can certainly leave the lines that you put down initially. Um, but if you like scrub enough with your brush, um, you won't be able to see where you put down your lines. Um, like you can completely move like the initial mark. Um, not all uh, water soluble markers um, are like that. And not all mediums will allow you, or sorry, like paper mediums will allow you to do that. Um, so like some papers are, are not as forgiving as this watercolor paper. So um, make sure you maybe do a little test, make sure, depending on what your plan is. Um, these ones, I remember I like to flip here. Um, and you can't, I remember I went back to this, like I drew this the first week we got the box and I went back to it weeks later and I could still completely fan out the colors that were there from uh, swatching them out. So um, so this paper does really love these markers um, a lot. And, okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to the grapes now. And I'm going to use, I don't, oh, I do have a purple marker. Hmm. I think I, I'm going to start with the marker. And then I think later on I'll come back with the colored pencil. And these supplies work really great together to layer on top of each other. Um, but if you're having trouble with the colored pencil showing up, you might just need to let your uh, drawing dry a little bit more. Because um, sometimes if your drawing's still a little too wet, since these colored pencils are water soluble, sometimes like it just gets a uh, like the pigment payoff gets a little bit funny um, when the surface is is already wet, but that can also be its own effect as well. So um, just kind of be aware of that depending on what look you're going for. So again, my brush is wet. It's not like if I if it was um, kind of like dripping wet, it probably would be spilling too much to these lines um, and uh, making everything bleed out. 
So I'm just making sure to not have too much water on my brush, just enough to get these edges fanned out. And I want to make sure that this is focused. Or if it's just looking that way to me, let me know if I need to make any adjustments. It looks a little bit fuzzy. Okay. I don't know just... if you can tweak something. Yeah, let me just try to... I wish there was like a focus button on Zoom. Let me try to lower it down a little bit. There. That looks a little better, right? Okay. Yeah, that looks better. Yeah. Just see when my hand comes in. It's like I need to keep my hand really low so it doesn't try to focus on that instead. Just continuing to fan these out. And I'm excited to come back in with some colored pencil. Um, and that's where you can start to decide if you're just going to add more color or you can add some shading with that. And it depends on how like realistic you want your doodle to be. Or you can keep it like real simple and just work with the outline. So um, I'm going to work on this blueberry here which is a, certainly a very bright blue to have as a blueberry but we can come in with that I think I'm going to add just like a little bit of purple in here and have them mix together when I use the water so let's see how that works I hope I didn't use too much purple. Uh, purple can be pretty overpowering. So it is a very, uh, I don't know. It's, it's almost, it's not quite like using black and paint, but like if you, if you're an acrylics painter, you know that even a little drop of black can have a huge effect. So use it sparingly. I think that looks like a nice color. And I kind of like how it still has that teal outline. And I like to think of these, I'm a, I'm a, uh, a sewer as well, a sewist. I don't know. I, th I struggle with what to call myself with that. There's a lot of uh, people use sewist, I don't know if I'm quite a seamstress. I feel like that sounds too professional. <laughs> um, sewist might work. Um, I'm a person who likes to sew. And doing the, these type of doodles make me uh, think a lot about like fabric textile patterns. And so when I'm, I think that's kind of why I like to keep things really like playful and stuff is... I imagine them getting printed onto fabric and kind of having that whimsical, uh, childlike kind of element to them. So, or like, how could this, like a lot of stuff with fabric, you know, might not, like they can only print a certain amount of detail or a certain amount of uh, certain colors, like limited colors. So I kind of um, think about that sometimes, so even though I haven't ever gotten a, design of mine printed onto fabric. <laughs> um, I still kind of think about it that way. Uh, maybe I think I'm just really inspired by uh, prints I see at the store. So so you can kind of see that it has a left a little bit of um I would say like a ghost line where I put down the ink initially um I could keep working at that but I actually like the way it's shading that side of the apple so I'm just going to keep it that way for the strawberry since it's so close to the apple I'm going to 
uh, use the same red. And then I'm also going to go in with a little bit of pink just to differentiate it. Oh, might have used a little bit too much water. I'm actually gonna take some off. If this is a tip, I guess, if you ever like spill too much water into the area, you can take your brush and kind of like absorb some of the water and then take your full of water brush and wipe it off on your paper towel. And then you can go back into it and it will absorb more of the water to kind of like pick some of it up. So that's what I'm gonna do there. And then I'm going to go back in now and try to blend it. Yes, it's hard to, you'll just kind of keep moving the water around if you, uh, if your brush is already full of water. So if you go and dry your brush off and then go back into it, it'll also absorb some of that and pick up the extra water. There. So we got some nice uh, variation there. Like, I guess I didn't ha even have to make that a red apple. I could have made it a dozen different colors. Um, I live in Washington State, so it's like, there's like, I don't know, there's like 16 different apples to choose from when you go to the grocery store here. Um, so many. We also get like the we get all of the like new apples that are being created like before they get like widely distributed um so i think they're widely distributed now as the cosmic crisp but we were getting those in stores like years ago because i think they were created at the university of washington so um i guess we get like the hot scoops on new kinds of apples here which makes sense Hey, Caitlin, while we're talking about fruit, have you tried the cotton candy grapes? Yes, I have. They were crazy. <laughs> <laughs> They're so weird. They are really weird. They were really I'm eating good. them with my daughter and I'm yeah. just like, how is this healthy? <laughs> yeah, they were really like, uh, it felt, yeah, I don't know. It felt like uh, I was getting away with something. I was like this, like, I don't know. I'm like, is this candy? Uh, it's genetically modified. Yeah, it was wild. Yeah, the Cosmic Crisp apple is a mix between, it's a it's a hybrid between Honey Crisp and the Enterprise apple. Um, so I thought Cosmic Crisp is a pretty creative way because they were going with like Enterprise, like Star Trek. Um, and I was like, that's clever. So it's also very on brand because you like space related. I stuff. know, I know. Of course. I'm I guess I'm living in the right place. Um, get the space related stuff. And now like different cider companies are coming out with cosmic crisp specific cider as well. Um but yeah, it's a good one. I really like honey crisp though. I think honey crisp is it's like, I mean, lots of people do. It's a, it's a fan favorite. Okay. So for this lime, um, I'm going to color the outside of the lime, like the peel with the marker. And I'm not going to fan it out because I don't want it to, um, I want, don't want it to dilute the intensity at all. Um, since I want this to be darker. So I'm just going to color it in and I'm using the small nib size um, side of the marker. All right. I think that looks great. Um, I'm going to come back and like do the stems a little bit later uh, just because I don't want any bleeding 
with um, the two colors and it doesn't it doesn't really take that long to dry but um, it's just a I like I don't know I think I, I kind of like to look work in phases so it'll be um, I like to kind of like stay in the same mindset I guess of uh, doing this process and then we'll go back and do all the stems and do any detail work so um, deciding how much of that I want to color in I think that's good okay get some more water here I was going to draw a pomegranate, but I ran out of room, so I didn't draw one, but I do love pomegranates. They're one of my favorite fruits. And then I am going to go ahead and do green on this one because it's separated, so they, they're not going to bleed into each other. I have to say pomegranate's probably one of my favorite fruits, but watermelon is my favorite artificial candy flavor as far as fruit goes. It's my my favorite. favorite is my favorite artificial flavor is like like a cherry dum dum lollipop. Yeah. Mine's like Jolly Rancher watermelon. Like that's the one I think of. <laughs> Do you remember blow pops? Oh yeah. Those are still around, right? I think, I think so. I don't know. I guess I haven't Arms, gotten one in a long time. Pop. Oh, let's see in the chat. Okay, we have some chat activity. Zaria, blue raspberry. Yeah. Uh, blue it's raspberry yeah. is very good. That's okay. If we're talking Slurpees from like Seven Eleven, blue blue raspberry, top tier. Absolutely. Uh, I'm trying to see. I think I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna go red and a little bit of purple for these cherries because I want it to have a little bit deeper of a color than um, the apple but I don't want too much purple because we saw what it did to the blueberries so we're really just I'm just going to go whoop, just a little bit not too much and then we can always go in later on my second phase to add in more color go cherries oh it's kind of once the water dries you'll be able to see that a little bit better um cherries are another one that we have a lot of varieties here as well all right yeah so you can kind of see the difference between the apple and the cherries um, have that purplish undertone. Um, and the bananas, I think I might make the bananas yellow and green to change it up a little bit. So they're a little, a little not ripe. And maybe if you're doing a fruit drawing, you could try to do ones that are overripe, make them a little brown. We could certainly come in and do that with this one with some colored pencil later. Um, and usually it's like more green on the seams of the, of the banana. So come in a little bit. water on my brush here. Yeah, those look really nice. Getting ready for spring, this bright drawing. 
I almost did a spring doodle, like all flowers and bunnies and watering cans. And then I was like, no, I'll save it for next, <laughs> next quarter. Um, we'll be all about spring. So I'm uh, very excited for the next box. The next box is awesome and the shipping next week. Ah, I'm so excited. Uh, I, we've been teasing a pack of three of the jelly rolls. But that is like a great, great item. But it's not the signature item. <laughs> yeah, it's like, but wait, there's more. Yeah. Um, situation so i do have the jelly rolls with me maybe we'll do a little sneak peek of those at the end that's a good idea um they are great i, I am like you won't hear me say a bad thing about a gel pen though so i man gel pens are like one of my favorite art supplies I do like the ones I'll be using today, though, the hybrid Technica uh, Pentel. Very good. But like I said, you won't. I haven't met very many gel pens I don't like. Okay, so let's see here. I want to do an orange with this one, but I don't have an orange marker. I have an orange colored pencil, but I kind of want to keep everything like looking you know similar now that like I was able to accomplish so much with just the markers before I go in with the colored pencils so I think I'm going to try doing uh like mixing these together and I'm going to do that I'm gonna see hmm actually I'll start with the yellow and I'll add a little bit of red and I'm gonna do that um right on the page and I think I'll just start with one little part of the orange so that um, like, I don't want to color them all in in case I'm not happy with, um, the, the, how much of each one I used. So we'll just take it little slice by slice here. Um, until I'm happy with the mix. Let's see. That's a little too yellow. So I'll go in with more red next time yellow, a little bit more red. And then we can always go in with that colored pencil on later to make it look even more orange. Maybe this will be like a blood orange. They're a little bit more red colored, so. And if I like having this like hard edge of the color, um, but depending on what look you were going for, um, you could also color a little bit onto a plastic tray or any non-porous surface. Like you could use a plastic bag or you could use the uh, bubble mailer that came in your box. And you could just color onto that a little bit and mix the inks together um, on there first before going in on your paper. And maybe we'll do that on one of the other pages. But I kind of like just the casualness like of uh, just mixing these right on the page. Um, cause this is something like if I was working out at a coffee shop or something and I didn't want to bring like a palette or, um, even like a whole water cup, maybe I'm just bringing a water brush or something. Um, this is something that I would do, um, on the go. Yeah, this is going to like, less like an orange, more like a blood orange or like a ruby red grapefruit situation. But I like it. I like it.
Eight, a couple more to go. And I think I am going to do the next ones here all at the same time. Or this could be like a, I don't know, a tangerine. Lots of, lots of different options. All right, now for the outside, I'm gonna go in with the yellow all the way around. And then the red, I'm just gonna going to sparingly go in with that. So certainly the one I've taken the most time on so far. And I do think it's funny that like, I don't know, I didn't plan it out this way, but the ones on this page, I had to mix less colors for than the ones on this, this other page. So um, not my intention, just kind of worked out. And now that my next slice of fruit, I was going to make it a cantaloupe, but now that this one's orange, I'm wondering if I should make it a honeydew instead. Whoops. Brush slipped a little bit there. That's fine. Embrace it. Um, I think I am because this was supposed to be an orange. I guess I have an orange and an orange. Hmm. We'll see. I think I'm going to go with a, a honeydew on this one, though. So honeydew is going to be darker green up here and kind of get lighter near the edge, I think. And I'm going to wait to do the rest of the colors on that part. And let's see, I'm going to try to go with a, hmm, let's see. Let's do a yellow and like a pink. Guess I'm thinking kind of like grapefruit. That'll be kind of orangey. Orangey pink color. I'm going to dry my brush off on the paper towel and then go back in. And I'm just like, I call this like, like, I don't know, like a scrubbing motion on top of where you put the pigment down on the paper. And this paper can withstand that. Some other papers will kind of deteriorate, deteriorate when you do that. Um, so just be careful doing that. But I know that this paper can um, withstand it. So I'm and being a little bit more aggressive uh, with fanning out that color. There, I don't know, I guess it doesn't look too much like a grapefruit, but that is what it is to me. Okay, and then this last one is a kiwi. I guess I went all green and orange over on this side. And 
I'm going to make it pretty dark on the outside. Because kiwis have like that white center, but it kind of has like a, doesn't have like a hard edge to it. It's kind of like fuzzy. So I'm going to try to do something like that too. Here, make it darker on the outsides. dry my brush off and then I'm going to go in with a big drop of water in the center kind of like uh, drop it in so I don't know if you saw that but it kind of like dropped in and then fanned out towards the edge and so now everything's kind of like pooling around the edge there um, and that looks very kiwi to me so that's great um, and now I'm going to go in with some, I'm trying to think if I should do colored pencil first or do the leaves. I think I'll just go straight with colored pencil. And first I'm just gonna go in with the same color as this and just um, as the as the pair, so green, green and green, um, not changing up the hue at all. Um, and I don't know. I guess I'm doing like a little bit of shading, um, but I'm not being too uh, specific about it. Just like darkening up one side so it has a little bit of a highlight. And mostly I just, I love how these pencils look on this textured paper and how it will kind of like grab the pencil. So here, let me get really close. So you can really start to see the texture come through on the paper. And it's not as much of the shading as I'm trying to get as the texture. Um, so that is what I'm going for there. And purple one. Um, this one's actually more of a grape color, so this works out really well. Again, hey, I'm just going to... Looking... Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Looking great. Um, we're a little over halfway through. Great in terms of time. So um, I know that someone in the chat wanted to take a look and see if they can see if you can do some ribbons as gradients and kind of like yeah. show that technique. So I want to be, uh, you know, uh, respectful of time. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. You can definitely take a look at that. I probably won't finish every single fruit here, but we'll go through um, a couple more and at least finish up the stems and stuff on them. Um, so again, this one, I'm not, uh, I'm not doing like exact shading, just adding a little bit of detail, a little bit of uh, texture. And I'm actually tempted to go in on this one with my brush and fan this color out a little bit. So I'm going to do that real quick and I'm making sure my brush is not too wet. So I actually dipped it into my water and then I uh, dried it off a little bit because I just want it just enough to slightly activate the pigment from the watercolor pencil. And I'm going to use the same pencil to do the top of the blueberries. And I'm just going to fill those in. I don't think I'm going to fan this one out. Um, I really like this. Uh, this is a magenta colored pencil. Um, and I'm just going to treat it kind of like a brown. So I'm going to go ahead and color all of my stems and with it. This would also be a great one if you wanted to make your banana look bruised at all. 
um, pink. Just do a little stem on this. And I'm going to come in with green for those. Oh, my kiwi's still a little bit wet there, it's still drying. And on this stem, I think I am going to come in and activate it with a little bit of water. Okay, I'm going to finish up a couple other little leafy parts here. Going and activating a little bit of that pigment. And then I was going to do the same thing here. finish this. All right. It's so got some detail added into here. Um, and then trying to see if I could close this yet. Not quite. Um, these are all, oops, except for not that part, pretty dry. I'm going to go in a little bit with a gel pen where I can. Let me find one. This is a size five. And I just am going to add a couple, let me make sure this is working, there we go, a um, couple little details the watermelon and then the strawberry. And I'm trying to think of how, like, you can really start to, like, once you start doodling, it's hard to, hard to know when to stop. Kind of like to go around and some of the contours, sharpen some stuff up. Um think some of some of these parts are not liking that I'm that it's not totally dry yet so I'm just gonna need to get this pen working or I need to switch switch the pen I have Oop. there you go uh, and then to fill I'm just gonna give you some examples to like fill in the background a little bit more um, I like to go in with little like stars and kind of use those as fillers. Um, you can do little stars like that um, and just go in in between all of your objects to just make it look more full. Um, another one you can do is just little circles, little tiny circles. Um, and like little dots as well. Like that kind of makes them look fizzy almost. <laughs> Fruit soda. Um, so those are some ideas then to go in and uh, really finish off your entire page. And then I think I can close this now. So let's move on to those banners. It's my space one. Got some banners. I love drawing banners. 
um, one of my favorite things. Um, so gradients, we can do some like, uh, we can do like a single color gradient or we can do one color into another one. So I'll, I'll at least I'll do one of each um, for that. Um, I'm gonna erase some of these extra lines here before I jump into this one. And like one of the things I really like about doing banners is that it's really easy to do like, uh, I don't know, like showing like the difference between the front of the banner and the back of the banner. Um, if you're trying to show value. So the front of the banner is going to be lighter um, in the back. And then you can go in and shade right around where the banner overlaps. So I'm going to do that first. And this may be a little close for that, but So I'm just putting the pigment on the top edge of the banner, and then I'm going to go back in after I do this part with the colored pencils and really start to define more of a value scale um, with uh, where it overlaps. And then in another one, we'll do it so that the two colors mix together. Um, I think it would be cool to do it from like one side of a banner to the other. Um, but if there is a specific type of gradient that you are looking for, just let me know. Um, and we can certainly uh, do a different kind too. Right. So I'm going to let this one dry and start working on another one and then come back into this one. As soon as I stop fanning out the colors on it. Okay. Um, let me see. I'm trying to see which one would be the best to do the double color on. Um, mm -hmm. I think I'm going to, I'm going to start really simple and do this one and let's see, I'm just going to go, I kind of want something that's going to mix really fun. So I'm going to go purple and pink here and do purple on this side. And then do a pink on this side. And I'm going to put a little bit more pink on right there, because I think this purple is going to kind of overtake it. So I'm going to first fan out the purple. And I'm only going to bring it halfway to the banner. All right, and these play really nicely on this paper. So you, you ha it's better to work, you know, quickly, but you don't have to work, you don't have to be like lightning fast. So you can let that sit there for a second. And then I cleaned off my brush a little bit. And then now I'm gonna go into the pink and pull um, into the center as well. 
start just pulling to the center and then start to overlap. And then I'm using that scrubbing motion right in the center. And just be careful if you put too much purple on, it can really start to infiltrate that whole area. So just be careful how much you're pulling your brush into it. If you want to keep it like a nice half and half mixture, um, you won't want to, you don't want to pull the purple all the way over to the pink. Um, so, and then because this is the purple side that goes underneath here, I'm just taking the small bullet nib going under this side. I'm going to color in a little bit right here. And then, whoops, close that wrong. And then I'm going to go in with my brush and fan this out. But I want it to be darker because it's underneath the other part of the banner. So I want it to look like it's under it and not like it's on top. There. So there's good little gradient there. And this gradients like this play nicer with colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. Um, and so uh, purple and pink would be good. Um, doing a pink and yellow is going to make kind of like an orange color. Um, doing a uh, blue and a teal is going to give you like a richer teal, probably in this case. Um, and then... Uh, then and you know doing a, a yellow and green is going to give you um, like that grass green color. Um, so something that would be like not mix as nicely would be a purple and yellow. But if you're looking to get like a nice brown color, then that is what you would want to mix together. So just be aware um, when you're color mixing like that. Um, so now that I did that one. I was going to, I think before I come in and do shading on this one, I'm going to go along the bottom edge of these ones with the yellow and kind of just richen up these colors here. So I'm going to go along the bottom here and I'm going to go ahead and just make all of my marks first and then go in with my brush. And now it looks like, <laughs> it looks like a, like a, Gosh, what are those called? Uh, like a candy, like a, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, not an airhead, but um, like a candy tape. Like a fruit roll-up? Kind of like a fruit roll-up, but it's candy. It's not a like fruit snack, I guess. They're usually like sugar, like, like a, a sugar, sprinkle. Like a sugar jelly <laughs> striper. Kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, those are looking cool. A little hair on there. There we go. I like ribbons too because they're so intuitive to shade. It's like something is clearly uh, behind something. So it's like, you know, it's so easy to make decisions like that to make this part like a lot darker. Um, or if you had two colors to pick from and you're doing something that's just as front and back, it's, it makes the decision process really easy. Um, so if you're new to shading things, it's a, it's a fun one to do. Alyssa said ribbon candy. That's the name of it. Is it ribbon candy? Okay. I was like. Yeah, which is like exactly what it should be, but we didn't think of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So there we go. Uh, yeah, I think I candy tape. So maybe I'm thinking of bubble gum. Um, all right. So we have that one. That one's looking great. Um, now I'm going to come in with colored pencil. I'm going to see how that's working. If I just go ahead and jump straight in, might need to give it some time. 
like I said, these behave differently when it's wet already. Um, so I'm just coming in and deepening up this area that is close to this edge that's overlapping. Uh, I'm going to start with the green uh, since it's already in the color palette that I'm using, but I might go into something like a, excuse me, like a purple um, to make that even more dramatic of a shadow. But I'm going to start here with the green first and just deepen it up along that edge where anything's overlapping. So you can see I'm getting less texture right now with the colored pencil because that surface is already wet. So like the paper isn't like grabbing the pigment as much. So it's just another way to use them, but um, definitely is different. It grabs the pigment so much more when the paper is dry. So I deepen those areas up and now I'm going to go in with the purple. And this is a pretty powerful purple. So you want to be careful um, how much you add because, um, again, like you almost want to treat it like a black. You want to be careful to add too much. And if you're planning on fanning this out, which I think I might be. Um, you don't have to be uh, super duper careful with like your mark making. Like if you're a little bit um, messy. Um, you don't have to be quite as careful because those kinds of, of lines will just disappear once you put the water on them. So this is going to be more of a realistic shadow effect since we're going into that purple color. Got to be very careful. I'm going to dry off my brush so I can fan out that gradient a little bit more. that look darker. My brush is pretty dry. I think I might need to get some more water. I'm just lightly getting water. I just barely touched it into my water. And this is something you can, like, if this wasn't dramatic enough, you can certainly go in and add, keep adding layers, um, especially once it's dry. You can, you know, do this, let it dry, come back with another layer, um, and do the next one. But that's creating a pretty good shadow effect there. Uh, maybe let's do one with only using colored pencil in kind of this style. Um, and let's see, I think I'm going to do this one. And let's just like go from or yeah, yeah, I'll do this one. Um, and we're just going to go from like one color to the next um, and let them all go into each other. This graphite was really soft, so it is smudging around a little bit. So I'm cleaning it off. Probably should have picked a harder uh, graphite to sketch with, but it'll work just fine. Okay. Uh, so let's see. I'm going to kind of like order my pencils here in a way that's going to help me. So maybe I'll start with red, orange, green. You could just do rainbow. 
or you know you can back this up and start with whatever color you want to first um, I just wanted all of them to kind of play nicely together uh, I think I might start with blue because it's going to be kind of darker anyway so I'm going to go ahead and color in this whole part blue and press down pretty hard uh, since this is supposed to be darker and go underneath and then I'm going to color this area and I'm kind of just going to use the same technique I was using with the markers so just doing the outline and then fanning the outline in um, except I'm going to do just a little bit more kind of on the edges and I'm going to take the next color in my line here and do the same thing over here. Just a little outline it, bring it up. And then where did my brush go? Okay. Uh, similar technique. Make sure uh, don't have too much water on the brush. And then I'm going to start at one edge, pull to the center, clean my brush, go to the next edge, and then combine them. And I do like starting, or I guess, I don't know, depending, just be aware of which, like if you're starting with the darker color first or the lighter color first, um, and know that darker color is going to be slightly more overpowering. So you need to be careful how far you pull it into the center. Where like on this side, I could pull that pink all the way over here and it probably wouldn't make that big of a difference. But if I pulled that purple further into the pink, it's it's definitely going to overtake it. So um, just be careful uh, and be cognizant of which one is going to be the darker color and kind of the dominant uh, color once you mix. See, if I pull it further into the blue right now, then that whole thing will kind of be a blue color or that, that it'll kind of overtake that whole blue color. So I'm going to first fan out this purple part. And then instead, I'm going to clean my brush and pull uh, the blue over here. So I'm still left with some of the pure blue on that side. And got to wait for that. I know it's there's like a sheen when it's wet. So uh, just have to wait for that. And I'm going to just go over this part. And I don't want to fan it out too much because that pigment will kind of like pool up on the edge of where you put your water. So I'm just kind of taking my brush and tapping it on the blue because it does like create so much more of a saturated color. Just kind of tapped it on there. Okay, now we can go into the purple area. And I'm going to make this whole area underneath here the dark magenta. And then we're going to go into this spot. And once I started this little part right here and then I'm going to pick up my next color which is red and connect it and color a little bit more red and I didn't use too much more purple because I think it's going to be pretty powerful just with what it has there and since the parts above is already purple kind of wanted to start that gradient a little bit early Pull it into the center, start to mix them. I do have a lot of water in that area, so I think I'm gonna have to dry my brush, come back. And I just like to focus on those edges and keep pulling the pigment in from the sides, just like that. Take my red and I'm going to 
the orange. Combine these two. It'll be a cool rainbow colored banner. Oof, that was a lot of water. It's all right. I'm going to dry this off just a little bit and then pull this orange down. Doing that a little bit out of order. That's okay. Going in with the yellow. And I will make it to my last color here, the green. Clean my brush. Grab a little bit more water. And... Dry it off a little bit, and then I'm going to pull it from that green into the next one. So yeah, it definitely helps to, like, not, like, when you're activating it, don't pull all the way down into the next section. Kind of, like, take breaks and pull the two colors together to meet in the middle instead of kind of activating both sides at the same time and hoping for the best once they meet in the middle. Um, definitely get a more controlled mix. I don't know if I just added way too much water to that part. Maybe. Again, I'm doing that technique where I'm going in and just picking up the water with my brush, and that will pull some pigment as well, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. All right, so we can look at that other side now, and this side's looking super cool. Um, gonna go ahead. I know we are getting kind of close to the end of class. Um, so if there's any other color combos we wanted to see, let me know. Um, probably have time for one more before we do our end of class uh, show and tell. Did blue and green, or we did green and yellow, and then pink and purple. Um, I was kind of thinking maybe doing the teal and green would be cool. Um, this one would also just be cool if you were doing one side in one color. And the other side in opposite color. Since they're so close to each other. And then I think could just mix one of them. So if I just put a little bit of a little bit of green on one well. with And after um, class, I'm going to be photographing each of these pages, um, like, up close uh, and individually so that if you want to, uh, and I'll post, like, an article in Mix so they'll all be together. And if you want to go in and use uh, this as a template to draw your own ribbons, you can, like, feel free to just like copy mine exactly um, to do these exercises. Um, so I'll make sure to take like a really good picture so you can um, kind of use them as a nice template. Um, and yeah, and definitely tag me on Mix. I'm Caitlin Conti on Mix. Um, if you're if you don't know it, I mean, if you're here, I think you know what Mix is, because that's where the link is to these live streams, mostly. 
Um, but uh, if you haven't explored it a bunch, um, I have several articles from this last quarter um, talking about the different techniques I've done in classes and ideas to fill the sketchbook that came in. Um, so there's kind of a cool one. So you can kind of see like one side looks green, one side looks blue green. Uh, okay, now that the water's dried on this one, you can see those gradients a lot better. I hey, love the hey, purple Galen, pink this one. Is Lee. Yeah. So. Uh, I think this is looking great. We got some comments in here. Uh, Zaria says, uh, yay, because I need ribbon help. I think she's referring to the templates that you're open to sharing. Oh, which is yeah, great. great. Yeah. Um, and we got about 10 minutes left here of the session, and I wanted to open it up to anyone that is watching live. If they want to um, share what they're made, or they just hanging out and watching. Um, if you want to raise your hand, either virtually or actually. Josie, here we go. Um, Lee. My voice is not the best, um, but okay. I, I made this in the class right before that was on your website uh, with the same markers that you use tonight. Um, yes. Michael's had this. Yes, yeah. there was a Michael's live stream earlier today, yes. Yeah, it's a little hard to do because uh, I don't know how to brush letter. And then I made your um, fruits, but I oh, use... Oh, nice. Uh, they're upside down, but you get the point. Uh, I use the... Um, Wax things that you put in the art journal box. The wax crayons. Yes. That you can watercolor because I didn't have those um, other colors that you had. Yeah, those look great. Thank you. It was really fun. I I didn't have your box, but I'll I'll join. I have a box on the way. Hopefully, you said next week, and then I hope to be here every time. Thank you. Yeah. That's the great thing about the like the live stream classes. We I try to use a lot of the supplies that come in the box, but a lot of the techniques are uh, transferable. So I like that you were able to use um, some other water soluble uh, art journal snacks. Excellent. Thanks for sharing. Anyone else want to share? I'm seeing in the chat. Yeah, ribbons are hard. Ribbons are hard. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, Aaron wants to share. Okay, hold on. Wait, Let's... I don't know if this is going to will my background. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, you're going to disappear. <laughs> oh, no. I'm trying to show it. Hang on. Sorry. If anybody okay. else want to jump in while I'm trying to figure it out, but... That's okay. <laughs> um, uh, If you want to turn off your virtual background, that would help. Because if you hold up something in front of your face, you'll... Working on... Oh, got it. Okay. There you go. I did the fruit. The light quality is not good, but... Yeah, it's not very good, but I was surprised by how well the, like, going over it with, like, um, you know, the pencils afterward made the texture pop out. You can't really see because of the light quality, but it worked really super well. So, nice. thank you. Yeah. That's great. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, um, yeah great techniques. Um, who Who doesn't like to draw fruit? It's, like, such a fun, just kind of thing to do uh let me see what else we got um so we did ribbon what were the other ones that uh you went through earlier Caitlin? um so i had the fruit page and then i have the space page and i'll post all of these on on mix um and uh then i have this ribbon page and then the last one i had was tvs and i have a little like can you talk about the tvs because you explained something <laughs> earlier and i was just like... yeah i actually have the examples here i have a um i have a planner journal i've kept for like years and i just kind of i'm not a very strict journaler so i take breaks a lot um with it i'm trying to find my tv page here's like my movies page so it's like you know you fill it in with like the different things so here's one of the tv shows of 2023 uh, and see, I've like written in different stuff, but I haven't inked them all. But I went in and did this whole page with just, you know, really similar markers to these. Um, and then went in and wrote the little TVs, TV shows that I've been watching. Um, and so that's just an example 
of like how you can utilize some of these doodles uh, in, in a journal or planner journal. Uh, something like the fruit or the ribbons. Um, I know people really like to kind of draw in the outlines and then use them as habit trackers um, for mood or like uh, cooking new meals or different stuff like that. So they can be used for all sorts of things. And I have another one in here somewhere of the TVs, but I, I have so many pages in there. I don't think I'm gonna be able to find it in time. Um, but yeah, that was kind of my thought process behind this. It could just simply be like a, a spread of really colorful objects, or you could uh, use like, be more utilitarian and use it um, to track TV shows or movies. Um, you could do ticket stubs or like music notes for concerts. Um, I, one of the ones I didn't get to, uh, when I was planning for this was I really just had the urge to like doodle, like different stuff with mail and do like boxes and envelopes and stuff. So you can really take anything and just kind of like fill up a page of like the, like simplified versions of it and make like a really fun pattern. Um, I did, you guys were mentioning, uh, the banners being, like difficult to draw. And so I just wanted to really quickly, I know I don't have a bunch of time, but really quickly uh, show one of my favorite tricks is you can kind of like make a spiral um, to start and you'll have to erase some lines. But this is like one of my favorite things to do. And then you can just draw down these like uh, vertical lines and start to fill in your banner and so you will have to erase the ones that go you know behind but it's a really good way to start um your banner drawing and you can like continue this one coming out and you can go back and start to fill in all of the ones that go behind um so that's one of my favorite like shortcuts for drawing banners um, and then the same thing can kind of go like if you get your initial banner. So like, let's just say this is the part that's going to be uh, in the front, I guess, like uh, no overlapping over this one. And then on each edge, you just can like go back and forth as many times as you want. Same with this one, just the opposite direction. And then just go through and drop down those uh, uh I keep wanting to say horizontal, vertical lines and go through and then uh, just uh, don't uh, like be aware of the ones you're overlapping. Oops, which I was like that one. I wasn't supposed to draw that one there. So just erase that real quick. That one actually goes up from the edge right there. Um, so yeah, if you needed a little like shortcut to drawing banners, um, those are like two easy ideas to go through um, and test those out. But yeah, it doesn't have to be um, like there. You can really make it simplified. Um, and uh, if you want it to look, I guess, like less doodly when you're drawing something more realistic, um, you'll just have to be more aware of uh, the thickness being consistent as you go back. Because sometimes um, if when I like I'm not doing this very carefully right now. So there's a big difference between like this thickness and this thickness. You can kind of see it, but that's fine because I'm just going for a, a really fun doodly effect. So, yeah, there's some little little banner shortcuts. Love that. That's great. Um, and I think people in the chat really appreciate that. Um, Aaron says in the chat, I'll be stealing your TV show tracking idea. Absolutely. Go for it. And uh, I think that's great. Um, I love this idea of like having um, like just like a spread of um, almost just like a like almost like a meditation spread where it's like around a theme, like themed spreads. Yeah, it's great. Um, I'm okay going a couple minutes extra. I know you wanted to show the click. Oh pens. yeah. Let me just grab those. Have them right over here. A little teaser for the next box. Little teaser. Right. So I have my set here. 
gold, silver, and white. It's the classic white jelly roll. And these are a size eight. Um, so I don't know if you have a, a jelly roll preference. Maybe you're someone that has all the sizes of stuff, but the eight's a really nice size. Um, I think like five is like their finest tip jelly roll and one is their biggest. So a 0.08 um, is really nice. And there's some, I don't think you can get it. I don't know if you can get the clicking because I have a headset on and it like, it like knows to block out things that aren't voices. So that's okay. Um, Why don't you click it on camera so you can show how it extends. But it. yeah. Yeah. It has a very satisfying click. I just know you it have. It does. Uh, the Art Snacks Instagram posted a really great video of it clicking. Um, and yeah, it's really, really nice. Um, uh, feel too. It's just like, I mean, it has the same ink as the other jelly rolls. Um, mm -hmm. so it's archival. Boy. Um, and yeah, really, really great pen. So, and the barrel is really nice. I feel like it's a little like here, I have the side by side. It's a little bit thicker or is it exactly the same for some reason? No, I think it's a little bit thicker. Um, it feels really nice to hold. It's a great, great pen. If you're a pen nerd, um, you will love it. Um, happy to answer any questions about the pens, if anyone has any. Yeah, they look great. I just realized that um, uh, Catherine was like, are you sold out of spring boxes? We are not sold out. I had to add additional inventory. <laughs> so if you're looking to get one now would be a good time so good a little that metallic gold looks great looks great i'm so excited to use these with the other super fun things that are coming in the spring box yes okay well thank you everyone um one more comment here. It's thicker. I have like 30 jelly rolls. Click ones are so amazing. I was shocked by the quality. Yeah. Yeah. So it's got a little bit more of a thicker barrel, but I think that's because of the click mechanism needed to have some room to operate. Right. Um, but it just feels really good in the hand. It really does. Yeah. And I like how they kept the detail of it looking like the cap was on, even yeah. though that's like totally not necessary, but like, I don't know. I just, I love that attention to detail. Mm -hmm. Feels like it fits in with the other jelly rolls and the jelly roll family. Yep. It's part of the family. Yep. That's right. Awesome. So any final words, uh, Caitlin, we're going to go to you. Um, not really. Uh, again, just look out for my post on mix. I'll try to get it up within the week and, um, and feel free to use my templates exactly. You don't have to worry about copying me or anything. I'd be flattered if um, you would use them and post what you create on Mix. So um, I'll be looking out for those. Awesome. Thanks everybody for joining us. Um, try to get this uh, playback up on uh, Mix sometime tomorrow. So thanks a lot. Bye.